Okay, so I'm going to try and do a uh, quick review on the Skag Tiger Cat 2 61 inch with the 26 horse Kawasaki EFI engine, the FT730V. I hate it. I hate this mower. I, I knew I didn't like Skag before I even bought it. I've tried them out, I've sat on them. I knew I didn't like them. I never should have bought it. But my reason being, the seat is my main issue. Well, kind of my main issue. It is very uncomfortable for me. They're, it's too soft. There just ain't enough support in the right places or something. And it just hurts my back. There's not enough lumbar support for me, which I am built different than a lot of people or whatever. But the seat just is not comfortable whatsoever. But uh, the way it was set up when I got it, I'm not blaming the dealer because I literally called one day. They said they had it still in a crate, and I picked it up the next day at like noon. So I'm not blaming the dealer for this at all. But the way it was set up with the baffle, like the factory settings and everything, it was cutting so bad. I was triple cutting every single yard just to get to cut the grass. It would just leave just big patches of grass not even cut for no apparent reason so i bought a deck leveling gauge made sure it's all level i set the front of the blade to the cutting height i had it set on three and a quarter inches i set it at that height raised the rear a quarter of an inch and that helped it a hell of a lot it got to where it's cutting better but it still leaves stragglers like crazy i mean it'll just be just dotted in the path just leaving stuff uncut but uh, I've played around with the baffle. I talked to two or three local Skag guys and they all said they run their baffles all the way down. I did that and I ended up hitting a few things. One time it wasn't avoidable and the baffle's kind of bent now. But uh, so just, it ain't cutting good at all. And I think the biggest issue is this engine, which I'll get to in a minute. But I'm gonna go over a few things right now, just real quick, that's kind of nitpicky type stuff. Like uh, on my John Deere, with the part brake engaged, you can bring the levers in with the blades run and everything, doesn't do anything, but you cannot move the levers. I don't know if that's something that could be done on a pump and motor style mower like this one is, because my Deere is transaxles. But the number one, as far as electrical things go, the number one annoying thing, do away with the park brake sensor and the or a park brake safety and a lever safety. I mean, leave the park brake on, you pull the handles in, it kills the motor, kills the whole entire machine. That's stupid. That's pointless. Have only one or the other, preferably a brake sensor. You know, park, put the park brake on, start the mower, and then go from there. I know that you can try to move it with the park brake on. I guess that's just to keep you from hurting the pumps and motors. I don't see why there couldn't be some sort of mechanism made where you either can't bring them in or at least can't move them once you, when you have the brake engaged. But that's number one, or number one electrical issue that I believe should be addressed as needless and stupid. Uh, another little nitpicky thing is that big ass Allen wrench, uh, Allen head bolt. I did adjust the pedal. It was in the middle. I adjusted it out. Why use an Allen wrench head, an Allen bolt for that? I mean, if anything, what I think you could do, maybe take back some of this knurling and cut this like a hex head. So most people are going to have an adjustable wrench that'll fit something this big. Most people are not going to have a fucking Allen key, Allen wrench this big. I didn't. I borrowed one from work in order to get that pedal moved. And then it was really tight. And I have seen people, I know Ray Ray commented on this, about these pass-through spindles. That is a system that is highly annoying and should have been, it's, if you ask me, it's old technology. I mean, I know some people say you can just take an impact from the top, but you still have to have this thing jacked way up in order for that big ass bolt to drop all the way down so you can even take it out from under the mower. 
in my opinion. I know some people don't have to have it like that or whatever, but that just ain't a very good system. And if you don't do it, if you can't get it to work from the right, you know, work from just the top only, here you are with one hand on top of the deck, one hand under the deck trying to get it loose. But uh, I lowered the gauge wheels so that to try and help with this big deck from scalping on my uneven yards, I don't know if a 60 inch John Deere will do it as bad, probably will because it's bigger, but I know my 54 have done pretty good. But, uh, and if you ask me, that wheel there is looking rough. I, I don't know if uh, it has a problem with their wheel quality, but that, that wheel looks kind of rough. But uh, another little complaint is that shut off valve. I mean, look how hard that is to get to. It's kind of stiff. You can't hardly turn it. It's tough to turn. Can't hardly get to it because of the arm and the, the roll bar. And then speaking of roll bar, the roll bar makes it difficult to fill the gas tank up because most of the time you have to tilt a jug way up to get everything out of it. And this is right in the way. And this sticks out in the way. This don't even fold. So if you try to come this way with it, you can't because of this. So that's annoying. And then I did, I was in the process of changing the oil when uh, I contacted Skag through their Facebook page and through the distributors on trying to take this thing back because I'm so unhappy with it. And the distributor called me saying the dealer would take the mower back and sell it for me. So I'm going to do that probably tomorrow. But I, anyway, I was in the process of changing the oil. I know it's dark down in there. I ain't got a flashlight right now. Don't feel like getting it. But down here, I'm sure you can see it, is your oil filter. Well, draining your actual oil is it bad. You put this down through here and run it out, twist this thing, and the oil comes out. That was nice and easy. Getting to that filter is now an impossible. I can't get my big hands down in there to get that damn thing off. So I ain't even changed it. I'm gonna let the dealer do that whenever they clean it up and everything in order to sell it. So getting to the oil filter is very annoying. And another, th and that leads me to the engine. I like that it's EFI. You don't have to choke it. The engine runs pretty good. But Skag, do away with a 23 horsepower block. I know it says 26 horsepower because it's EFI, but 23 and a half horsepower is what the carbureted version of this. That is nowhere near enough power for a 61 inch cut. Do away with a 730V on a 61 inch mower of any kind. I mean, I can understand putting it on a lesser quality or lesser grade, whatever you want to call it, like a Patriot or, you know, even Freedom Z or whatever. But do away with a 730V. They are not powerful enough. They're barely powerful enough for a 52 inch. Ask. <clears throat> They're barely powerful enough for a 52 inch. I know somebody that would agree with me. So, if you want my opinion, which I'm sure you don't because I'm not happy. Uh, engine options for a Tiger Cat 2, 61 inch. 31 horsepower Kawasaki. 28 horsepower Vanguard EFI, 32 horsepower Vanguard, 35 horsepower Kawasaki, and 35 horsepower Vanguard carbureted. Shouldn't be nothing less than that. Only two options available for this motor right now, 730 VFI and 32 horse carbureted Vanguard. The prices and availability may be an issue because of uh, Kawasaki, which I've heard that a long time ago now. So it may make it a little bit more difficult to put those Kawasaki versions of engines on this mower. But, I mean, even a 27 horse Kawasaki, you know, one horsepower more, but a carburetor version, I'd say would make a world of difference on this mower. But, anyway, that's, that's my complaints and issues and everything with this mower for now. Like I say, I'm not happy. I never should have bought it. I'm not biased against Skag, but I just never have been happy what little I have fooled with them. I just, I don't 
I'm not a fan. And another thing, I ain't getting up again to show you, but you see those extensions on both arms? I ordered those off of eBay. Somebody makes them or at least sells them or whatever in order to get the handles up because with the way I'm built, I can't get my legs up to get to the pedals while driving the mower. And the automatic deck latch is kind of annoying when doing that, when favoring the deck over anything, because if you lift it up and it latches, you have to unlatch it again. It's kind of nice and convenient in some ways, but if you have to, if you're constantly, if you have to go over stuff, it gets annoying. But anyway, that's my take on the Skag Tiger Cat 2. I know some people are going to come in here and be all like, oh, yeah, you're biased into the deer lover, and blah, 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 and, you know, nah. Everybody has a favorite. I know deer does good for me. I tried something different. It didn't work out. I'm going back with deer. If, people, if companies would demo want something, that's one thing. Local Skag or local Spartan bad boy Gravely dealer doesn't demo nothing. So... That just puts them out the window automatically. I'm not demo. I'm not buying something for somebody that don't demo. And you're gonna be like, well, you didn't demo the Tiger Cat. I've demoed a Skag before, and it's my own mistake. I shouldn't have bought it because I didn't like the. I, I've got a Turf Tiger. You can look back at the videos. I talk about it. I didn't film it, but I did I have a Turf Tiger. I demoed. I didn't like it. So my own fault. But it's gonna be changed and made right here pretty soon. But anyway, that's, that's that. So my deer, they still can't figure out what the issue is. It's been gone a month now. And I'm getting where I'm not being very happy with deer because of that. And two, the mower I'm buying is a Z950E or Z950M 60 inch cut. I couldn't get a 960, which is a 31 horsepower because of the availability. But uh, get a 950M 60 inch cut, and the total price is going to be just over $17,000. they are charging me $500 just to transfer it from one dealer to another. It's got to come from Murphy's, Murphy's or Murphy's or Murfreesboro or some wherever the hell, Tennessee, up to Cleveland, Tennessee, then up to AgPro in Knoxville. It's, I'm buying it from an AgPro. And the whole reason why is they could get it that soon. A Mead tractor dealer in Hazard, Kentucky, which is about an hour, an hour and a half away from me in the opposite direction, had a 950 in stock at that time. But I'm trying to make this all in one trip. I mean, it, I ain't gonna, I'm probably not going to save anything because I'd say about all I would really save most likely if I did buy it from Hazard would have been... I don't know, a couple hundred, maybe a thousand, maybe two at most, which I highly doubt because the mower, they quoted me like 13 something and then who knows after all taxes and fees and everything, which, but I am getting the deer finance. That's the important thing. About positive is 0% down. My payments are gonna be about 230 bucks a month or something like that. Less than three grand a year for six years. So I think that's doable and as long as that all works out i'm just going to do that make it all in one trip bada bing bada boom done and gone on to something else anyway long-winded explanation that's my review i'll see y'all later